Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is our 16th lesson on meteorology. We're going to discuss some of the meteorological services available to you. First off, uh, since the internet came around, getting weather is a lot easier right now, or now you can just go online and to get aviation weather. However, there are some services that are still available. Firstly, the Aviation Weather Information Service, if you call um, the Flight Information Service extension the, uh, on the radio, they can give you some weather. I'm not gonna go into this too much because it's, it's so rare. You can also get a proper weather briefing from a flight service specialist by giving them a call on 1-866-WX-BRIEF. We'll talk about that in a little bit and uh, they'll give you kind of a formal briefing, but it's really kind of gone by the wayside since all this information is available online. Uh, flight service stations and the flight service specialists that man these stations uh, were incredibly useful in days past. Uh, unfortunately, with budget cuts, things like that, NAV Canada has really cut back on these services. But it used to be when I started my career, you uh, a lot of airports had these uh, flight service stations. So you would just walk in there and speak to a flight service specialist. They would give you a proper weather briefing. They'd also be talking on the radio, take your flight plan. And it was nice to have a a face of uh, a face-to-face -face talk with somebody who's really an expert in their field of uh, weather uh, interpretation. Uh, however, you can still give them a call on one eight six six WX brief, and uh, and they can uh, give you a, a weather briefing. However, most of these services have been moved online. You can check out flightplanning.navcanada.ca and plan.navcanada.ca. Flight service stations, they also provide air traffic services for small airports, let's say uh, mandatory frequencies, uh, things like that. Uh, here's something I have no idea why it's in the study guide and it's pretty useless. The pilot's automatic telephone weather answering service. I've never even really heard of this. It was probably something before my time, maybe back when they used abacuses. I have no idea, but I assume it's like an answering machine. You just call them up and it gives you the, the uh, it gives you the weather. It can't even find it in the textbook, but I have to cover it because it's in the study guide. However, with the advent of the internet, uh, Nav Canada thankfully has an excellent website on plan.navcanada.ca, and uh, I would encourage you to get really familiar with the site, uh, how to find the weather, the different types of weather products available. So before you go flying. Uh, or at least before you go flying every day, maybe sometimes even when you're not going flying, check out this website and just get used to the different weather products available and learn how to interpret the weather for yourself. Lastly, uh, you may uh, check out an automated terminal information service. That is a VHF frequency at a lot of uh, airports with control towers and it provides weather, runway, and other pertinent information. This frequency is found in the Canada Flight Supplement, and uh, it's used to reduce uh, frequency congestion so that you don't need to, the tower does not need to tell you what the weather is for every single airport and what runway uh, they're using. Uh, you wanna record this information, write it down prior to contacting tower or ground and just be familiar with it. So when, when they tell you what runway uh, you're going to, well, you've already heard that before, so you can kind of expect your taxi clearance. Uh, here's a sample ATIS, how it sounds like. And as you get through it, it might be a bit of a surprise. Wilmington International Airport. Automated weather observation 2204 Zulu. Wind unreadable at unknown degrees gusting to input error number out of range. Visibility four feet and decreasing rapidly. Sky condition category five. Ceiling unlimited in the eye of current storm system. Otherwise, ceiling input error ceiling not a number ceiling too low no ceiling could be detected. Temperature 20. 2.20. Altimeter 00.019er. Runway 35 is currently in use. The threshold for approaching aircraft is currently demarcated by the floating red buoy just to the north of the bent antennas protruding out of the water, not the one to the left of the floating Dunkin' Donuts, as that's what's left of my supervisor's car, but the one to the right of it. All aircraft that are landing should have a valid boating license with a U.S. Navy Ohio class nuclear submarine skipper certification. Be advised that there is heavy rescue helicopter traffic in the vicinity of Wilmington. 
Please note that you do not need to ASAP the water skiers that are currently doing jumps off the top of the main concourse. All airmen who would like to report negative air speeds greater than 300 knots, it is best advised to point your tail in the direction of Miami Center and fly south as to avoid saturating Wilmington airspace. The U.S. Coast Guard is currently collecting various aircraft parts for use in building a storm shelter. If you would like to volunteer for the next mission, sign up at the tower. An Allegiant aircraft took off 30 minutes ago, so rumor has it there is plenty of parts to be had. By the way, you best be scuba certified, since as of right now the runway is 125 feet below the surface of the water. Well, 308 if you count the peak of the waves. In any case, to all pilots who would like to request VFR flight following, please contact 121.5, as the trainee is currently doing a check right on that frequency. Spirit Airlines has announced that flotation devices will be provided free of charge for the first time in the company's history. The only problem is, the NOAA and U.S. Air Force Hurricane Hunters all said wow fuck this shit and booked every Spirit flight out of here last night. But in all seriousness, stay safe out there. Advise on initial contact you have information Florence. I mean Foxtrot. Damn it. So obviously that last one was uh, turned into a bit of a joke, but here's a proper ATIS how uh, it actually sounds like. And I was Mirabel International, uh, information uniform, weather at 1700 Zulu, wind 260 at 4, wind variable 190 degrees to 310 degrees, visibility 45, 4900 scattered, 9000 broken, temperature 20, dew point 14. Altimeter 2985. The IFR approach is a visual. Landing and departing runway 29er. LOTAM runway 0624 close low approach not authorized below 200 feet AGL several taxiways close. Inform ATC. Canada The other thing about the ATIS is I learned it is actually also a fruit. This is how it looks like. Who would have known? So a review, you can get your weather from Nav Canada on plan.navcanada.ca or flightplanning.navcanada.ca. You can also make, give a uh, telephone call, 1-866-WX-BRIEF. And the uh, automated terminal information service, the ATIS, provides airport and weather information, so ATC doesn't need to provide it to you. It relieves frequency congestion. What is the purpose of the ATIS? A, to relieve frequency congestion. So, yep, yeah, that's uh, correct. It does relieve frequency congestion. B, to provide weather and airport information. Yeah, yes, it does do that too. Uh, C, to provide limited ATC clearances. Uh, no, it doesn't do that at all. D, A, and B are correct. Uh, that is the correct answer, A and B. That concludes this uh, lesson. We'll see you on our next lesson.